Hypoxemia is one reason why patients may end up in the ICU because they need increasing requirements of oxygen. And one of the reasons they might have hypoxemia is from something we call pleural effusions. Pleural effusions occur when there's a buildup in fluid around the intrathoracic space between the bridal pleura and the visceral pleura. We generally see the buildup of this fluid on chest x-rays, which we can get very commonly and almost daily in patients who have oxygen requirements or we're worried about lung pathologies. But you can also see pleural effusions on CT scans as well as ultrasounds. A few of the most common causes for pleural effusions in the U.S. are going to be congestive heart failure, pneumonia, as well as cancer. One of the ways to differentiate the etiology or the cause of these pleural effusions is by tapping the fluid. You can do that either with a thoracentesis, where you just basically pull out the fluid with a needle and just remove all of the fluid that's there. Or you can place a chest tube, uh, which is like a pigtail catheter, and that stays in the parietal pleural space uh, a little bit longer, and then allows continuous drainage as long as that tube is in place. One of the first things you're going to notice as fluid starts to come out is the color of the appearance of that fluid. If it's bloody, then this could have been a hemothorax from like a vascular injury, and that was the fluid that was accumulating there. Or if it's really bloody, uh, it could just be from a traumatic insertion of the needle, since you have intercostal blood vessels that are right there where you're inserting your chest tube. If it's cloudy or turbid and kind of hard to see through, then this may be indicative of potentially uh, fluid from a pneumonia or a chylothorax, which is when you have lymphatic fluid that's draining into that space. And then lastly, this is something that we don't typically see because usually the fluid is in a contained environment, but if for some reason you got a whiff of it or a smell of it and it had a putrid smell to it, usually foul smelling things uh, indicate infection. And so this may be an uh, indication that this is a pneumonia. And the next thing, when you test this fluid, you're going to try and figure out whether this is transudative and exudative. And for that, you're going to be looking at both the serum and the pleural LDH and albumin level. Now, transudative fluid is occurs when you have an uh, imbalance of hydrostatic forces or oncotic forces. Uh, this is typically seen in congestive heart failure, where you basically have backup of fluid within your pulmonary vessels, and then that hydrostatic force is forcing that fluid out of your blood vessels and then into that pleural space. And then exudative fluid is usually a result of something like a pneumonia or a cancer where you have more of a local process going on. And that local process is causing the buildup of uh, cellular reactions. And that's why this, usually the fluid looks different and these cell counts are going to be different. So when you're trying to figure out whether this is transudative or exudative, we use something called the LIGHTS criteria. Like I mentioned before, the LIGHTS criteria takes into account the albumin and the LDH for both the pleural and the serum. And there's three categories of, or three checkpoints within LIGHTS criteria. And if you hit at least one of them, then usually it's going to be positive for an exudative fluid. The first one is going to be your pleural albumin level ratio to the serum albumin level. And if that ratio is greater than five, then this is going to be indicative of an exudative fluid. Next, looking at the LDH level, if your pleural LDH is greater than your serum LDH by 0.6, or if that ratio is greater than 0.6, that's also indicative of an exudative process. And then lastly, if your pleural LDH is greater than two-thirds of the upper limit of normal of the serum LDH level, then that's also going to be indicative of an exudative process. And then if you get a cell count in these pleural studies like a CBC or a white count with a differential, if you have predominantly neutrophils, that's going to be more indicative of a pneumonia. And if you have uh, greater than 50% or predominance of lymphocytes, that's going to be more indicative of cancer or tuberculosis. And then if you do think this is an exudative process, you can send that fluid for gram stain and culture, where the lab will basically try and isolate whatever bacteria is in that fluid, and then also get sensitivity so you know which antibiotics that bacteria is going to be responsive to. And although chylothoraxes are rare, you can sometimes see this lymphatic leak from traumas or even post-surgical, especially if you're someone who's having surgery within like the thoracic region. And the biggest difference you're going to see in the plural studies is these collections are going to have high uh, triglyceride levels, usually greater than like 100 milligrams per deciliter. It also has like a milkier, cloudier appearance of the actual fluid. So while thoracentesis and chest tubes can be very therapeutic for patients to allow more expansion of their lungs and better breathing mechanics and better compliance of their lungs. It can also be diagnostic as we run these tests to figure out what the etiology is of their uh, pleural effusions and then ultimately get down to the right treatment process so that we can make sure that it doesn't reaccumulate over time.